Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ruscio. I'm here with Dr. Navaz, who has had an interesting story with Healthy Gut, Healthy You. And it's actually fairly interesting how we met. I was at a conference in New York, I was speaking at the Integrative Healthcare Symposium, and you were about in the front row, and you gave me probably the nicest compliment anyone has given me about the book to date. And you said, you know, me and the, the doctors in my office, this book is like our Bible for improving patients' gut health, which, I mean, it's, it's one thing, and it's great when a, when a lay person applies the book protocol and feels better. That's awesome. But to know that doctors are using this with multiple patients yeah. really, really made me feel like the book was having an impact in the world. So I have to thank you for that because that, you know, that, that was a, a compliment that I kept thinking back to over the next few weeks and just being very happy with, with what that meant in terms of the impact the book was having. So welcome yeah. and, and thank you. No, my pleasure. And thank you for, for writing such a wonderful book and, and sharing that resource with us because from the doctor's perspective, it's, it's difficult to know everything all the time and having something that we can refer to and go back to where necessary and, and see if, if something's missing or it's just not working in this direction. Maybe we've missed something on that side. Having that resource is really, really effective. And so thank you for, for doing that. Yeah, and my, my pleasure. And that it was the, a big part of the reason why I wrote the book was to really help people navigate what can be a, a tricky area, the gut, as, as effectively as, as possible. Tell people a little about, you know, how you practice, what you do, how the book's been helping you, really kind of whatever you want to share. Certainly. I am a functional medicine practitioner. I'm located in Toronto, Canada, and I've been working, doing functional medicine for about three or four years now, ever since it had a very positive impact on my own life and affecting my own gut health. And so I used to weigh 250 pounds. I used to have significant health challenges, IBS. Um, significant issues with uh, being borderline diabetic, um, obesity, blood pressure issues, all of those same issues. And this was happening in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And once I was able to identify what those issues were, get the right lab testing, figure out what really needed to be done to affect my cellular health and get the root cause sorted out, I was able to affect my health in a very positive way. And so my energy level started to rise. And I really just started to feel like I could do more, that my health wasn't holding me back anymore. And a big component of that was affecting my gut health because my root cause was an overgrowth of yeast in my gut. I had a very specific yeast overgrowth that was found on one of our lab tests and we were able to identify that, get rid of it with relative ease and, and natural herbal and um, supplement remedies and such. Um, and then once the changes started occurring in my life, I said, I have to stop doing what I'm currently doing and I have to now shift all of my attention to sharing this life-changing information with as many people as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And so I shifted into clinical care as a functional medicine doctor from being a chiropractor, a hands-on chiropractor. Right, right. And it's, it's amazing how your own personal experience can really change your trajectory. I thought I wanted to go into orthopedic medicine when I was younger until, as, as you probably know, I had a parasite in college and it just really brought me to my knees. And I saw this huge change in how I was feeling. And I, I doubt I would be the person I am today in terms of what I've achieved, even if I ended up in a different field, because I didn't have the energy, I didn't have the mental clarity, and I certainly didn't have a positive mood. And, and so it's, it's hard to think I'd have the richness in my life in any facet, from professional to relational, if I didn't address that issue. And so, of course, when you have that experience, you can't help but want to share that with other people, knowing how impactful it is. Absolutely. So are, are there some things that you're finding particularly helpful you know, as a doctor working with patients that the, the book has, has kind of laid out for you? Yeah, there's a huge component that, that I feel like a lot of people really do overlook. I actually wrote in my own book on, on a very similar topic or on, on that gut-brain connection topic, but I feel like prokinetics and, and having that right level of peristalsis and movement occurring through the intestine, allowing that, that proper digestive sequence to occur is so important and strongly overlooked. We, we tend to miss that piece of the puzzle. We'll always talk about you need to eat these foods. You need to avoid those foods. You need to eat slowly. But we, we miss a lot of the sequencing pieces of the puzzle and, and allowing the kinetic function of our peristaltic movement to occur and, and allow all of the organs to do the job that they need to do in the time allotted, in the amount of time that they 
actually need to do their job effectively and optimally in, in the greatest cases. So there was a really great chapter in here on prokinetics and allowing that peristalsis really to occur that made a huge change for me. And so it is really like our go-to reference in the office to be able to go and check that out all the time um, and uh, just go back and refer to, you know, patients come in with, with various challenges. It, it ranges from an IBS to a Crohn's to a thyroid issue to a, um, and, and staying on top of all of those things, the vast majority of these health challenges biochemically really do start in the gut. And so if we can have a positive effect there in the gut, we can really affect that positive change. And you, you said something that I think is, is worth kind of elaborating on, and I'm curious to hear what you're seeing in your practice, which is thyroid. Yes. Uh, certainly there are obviously, of course, cases that are overtly hypothyroid that need medication. Um, there are some cases that aren't hypothyroid, but someone goes on the internet, they Google their symptoms, and they think that they have a hypothyroid problem all the while the cause is the gut. And there's this other scenario also where someone's diagnosed hypothyroid, they're on medication, they're not getting any better, and the root cause of their symptoms is the gut. Yeah. You know, are you seeing any mixture of these two? Yeah, for me, primary hypothyroidism is is one of the least common things that that are that we see in practice. The vast, vast majority of people that come in with the thyroid issue have that occurring starting in the gut. The root cause is is generally coming from the gut, and so we'll often find on on a stool test we'll find overgrowths of certain uh, bacteria that are autoimmune triggering bacteria that are probably leading to some sort of Hashimoto style process leading to that hypothyroidism. Or we'll find a parasite that's leaching a lot of these uh, nutrients that are necessary for thyroid function. And so if we don't get those nutrients, then the thyroid isn't able to do the job. And so our thyroid isn't primarily hypothyroid, it's lacking those nutrients, but the primary source of that issue is actually starting in the gut. The vast majority of the time, that's what I see in my practice as well. Yep. Yep. And, and I, I would say I'm, I'm grateful that the functional medicine community has increased the awareness of Hashimoto's and the underlying autoimmune process that does cause thyroid uh, hypothyroidism. But at the same time, I think that's, that's kind of exploded in awareness and it's, it's a bit dwarfed the importance of the gut yeah. when really the, from a causal perspective, the gut is more prominent and thyroid is, is secondary, as you said. And, and so hopefully we're, we're making a small dent in, in kind of rectifying some of that imbalance. Absolutely. That's, that's what we got to do. Just keep educating and sharing and f hopefully people will figure out that the gut truly is where all of this stuff really does begin. It's funny. We, we like to think of the, the primary brain as being the one between our ears, but it, it really is funny how, how much information is stored and, and shared from our gut. And that really is the enteric nervous system, the nervous system around our gut. That truly is the first brain and everything stems from there. Completely agreed. You're preaching in the choir, <laughs> as you know. Um, are there any other thoughts or insights or maybe case stories where the book was, was helpful or, or just from generally treating a patient's gut you saw some noteworthy kind of improvement? Yeah, we've had a lot of patients come in with digestive dysfunction, autoimmune gut issues. And this has been a wonderful reference for us going through a lot of the case studies that you presented in there because um, cases tend to be a lot easier to kind of go through and, and read through when, when you have similar symptoms as, as a patient that went through a positive case study, right? And so anytime we, we start to get a little stumped with a Crohn's case or an ulcerative colitis case, the first thing that we'll, we'll tend to do is, is pick up that book and refer to a little bit of this case or that case, different scenarios. So I'll tell you one, we had a, a patient come in with, um, with really severe, almost explosive diarrhea. He, he essentially could not um, control his urgency at all. He, he essentially, he was a driver, which didn't work well. He was a delivery driver for FedEx and his, his FedEx route, he knew every single washroom along that entire route because oh, he knew the moment that he needed to go, he was going to have to pull into a, a lot and just jump right in. Right. So being able to affect a life very positively in that way, being able to, to eliminate that source of stress for him by using a lot of the tools that you incorporated in the book 
were just wonderful for us uh, to be able to share that with this gentleman. And, and he really did notice significant improvement and literally it started within three days of making changes where like the, the issues weren't as urgent and all of a sudden he was going to the bathroom twice a day and it was simple and easy. And it was like the urgency was just gone. That, that made a huge difference for us. It's easy, I think, sometimes to, unless you've suffered with, with somewhat debilitating diarrhea, to really understand how debilitating that can be. And it reminds me of Matt, the inflammatory bowel disease case study we shared in the newsletter a few months back. Uh, this bright young guy who had everything going for him and was, was trying to take this new job, I believe it was, it was in New York, and he, he had to take some time off of work because he was so scared to not be near a bathroom. And, and when you think about how crippling that must be to be to be a young person who who has the ability to do this new job and go out in the world and, and have an effect, but they're just crippled by this diarrhea, it, it's, it really gives you a new kind of respect for how impactful you know, chronic diarrhea can be on someone's lifestyle. And, and yeah. as you're describing with his case, he had a new lease on life once we got that diarrhea taken care of and he felt so happy he could pursue forward with his job and with his career and have you know the, the positive impact in the world that he wanted to and not be hinged to a toilet and he had a similar sort of I knew where every bathroom was <laughs> around my around my work kind of like one of those Seinfeld episodes where is the cleanest public bathroom um, but we don't want anyone to be encumbered by that so yeah what a, what a gift to be able to take that off someone's psyche yeah absolutely there's nothing better than being able to give somebody the opportunity to live their life without having health as their um as their concern and as a stressor because in in cases like that health truly can be a stressor or the lack of health can be a major stressor for people agreed agreed well I, you know i really appreciate you you sharing your thoughts are there any um kind of final thoughts that you want to share with people and then also please tell people your website in case people want to reach out and, and connect with you um, regarding the the good work that you're offering in your practice Certainly. So I practice in Toronto, but I do work remotely very similarly to Dr. Ruscio. And um, the idea is let's get the message out to as many people as possible. Let's, let's share the idea of becoming healthy, starting from the root cause, addressing what needs to be addressed the way that nature intended really for us to be able to make positive changes for people. And so um, you can reach me or you can learn more about me at drhabib.ca. And uh, if you're interested in reading about the vagus nerve, I do have that book as well. You can just go to vagusnervebook.com. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you again for, for sharing your story. And thank you again for that, that great compliment. I really appreciate you just letting me know how helpful the book has been. Um, it you know, makes me feel good about the three years of, of work that went into it. Um, and I really, really appreciate it. Definitely. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.